In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to implement the four next loops and also the four each. What we're trying to do in this screencast is I've got a selection and I want to find the sevens. When I click find sevens, first of all, it's going to have this little title placed into cell C1 and then it's going to spit out the rows that seven was found in of my original selection. We're also going to implement a reset on here, which just clears everything in column C. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort of set it up and we're going to find where we have sevens. So I'm first going to dim I as an integer. That's going to be an iteration index for our for loop and NR, which is the number of rows. We're going to start with a selection selected so I can count number rows equal to the selection dot rows dot count. Next, we're going to iterate through all of those. In this case, I have a selection with 13 rows and we're going to check to see if selection dot cells I comma one is equal to seven. If that's the case, I'm just going to output it in a message box here for our first iteration of this. So we set it up for I equals one to number rows. We have our next I. If selection dot cells I comma one equals seven, then message box, I found a seven. So let's go through this. I'm going to F eight through here to check the four, which is not a seven. Now we're on row two and that is a seven. So we're going to message box a seven and then we keep going. But what we really want to do is be able to record the row and over here in column C, we want to output it as in the example I showed at the beginning of the screencast. So instead of this message box, we're going to replace that with something. First thing I'm going to do is if we find a match, if we find a seven, then I'm going to set, set this counting number C. I'm going to set C equal to C plus one. So that's kind of going to keep a tally of how many sevens we found. Next, instead of outputting it in a message box that we found a seven, I'm going to say range C and little c. So little c is going to be our counting number. So on the first seven that we find, C is going to be equal to one. So I'm going to place into range C1, I'm going to put the row number, and in this case, that'll be two. So let's go ahead and run this. I step through this. I find my first match in A2, which is when I equals two. We set C equal to one. So down in the locals window, C is equal to one. Now into range C1, because little c is one, into C1, we place the current row, which is I. Then we move up to the next I, and we don't find another seven until row five. So when we find the second match, C will be bumped up to two. And now in range C2, we're gonna place the current row that we're in, which is I, and that's five. I'm gonna add in a new sub here, which is reset. And reset is just gonna clear column C. And at the beginning of my find seven, I'm going to say call reset. Call reset then will run the reset sub, which clears column C. Another thing, I just added these three lines here if C equals one, then range C1 equals seven found in row. So this is gonna be in cell C1, seven found in row, and I'll put a, a colon there. So that puts a kind of a title in column C, but now instead of being C down here, I'm gonna have to add one. So we're shifting all the values down by one. So let's run this. It calls the reset subroutine, which just clears all the cells in column C. And now we do the same thing that we did earlier. We found a seven. Now I don't start with this because maybe our selection doesn't have any sevens in it and we don't want that being displayed unless there's some sevens. So if C equals one, then we add that title. That's only gonna happen the first time because C is only one once. So now we found a seven in row two. So we've shifted that down from what we had previously and then we keep going and we can just resume. And that's how you can output where you find the sevens. Now for the four each is a little different. It's more object oriented. So dimmed RNG, which is gonna be a range as an object, and also ITM, which is gonna be an item in our range as an object. Instead of the counting the number of rows, I'm just gonna say set RNG equal to the selection. So we're gonna take the current selection and set it as this range object. Now instead of for i equals one to n r, we're gonna say for each, that's where the for each statement, for each itm 
So that's each item in our range. I, I also need, instead of next I, it's just next. Now instead of selection.cells, we're just going to say if ITM is equal to 7, then all of this is the same. We're still going to do the C stuff here. But here we're going to say range C and C plus 1 equals ITM.row. So it's going to give us the row of the item. I should let you guys know, this is pretty important, if your selection doesn't start in A1, and it, so if you shifted this down, it's not going to give you the row number in the selection. That's why I like to use the for next approach that I showed earlier. The for each is going to give you just a row number, the row of the spreadsheet. So it's not going to give you the row of the selection. In other words, if I made this as my selection, the first seven will be found in row 10 and not row five. Using the for next approach that I showed earlier, the first seven, if this was my selection, would be found in row five. So let's go through this. We reset, and then we set range equal to selection, and now we go through, and you're doing the same thing as we did earlier using the for each. And we find our sevens, and it acts in just the same way as the for next did. The for each is quite popular. I'm a real big fan of just using the for next and iterating with a, an index number. Plenty of people use the for each. We can then put buttons on here to associate them with the subroutine and the reset subroutine that we created. And then we can run it. So I can find sevens and I can reset it. Thanks for watching.